Oh, hello, my friends. Welcome back to the season finale of The Weather. I feel so lost. It feels like the end of times. But before we drive out into the sunset so far that we may never come back, let's come together and reflect on where we've been. previously on the weather. That's right, this week launched the final episode of my four-part series, Abby Palmer Invents the Weather, in collaboration with my two cats, Lola Lola and Xiao Kao. Heat, the final film, looks back at what I've learned over this series, exploring the anxiety around climate crisis and how I've learned to deal with it. I channeled my feelings into making very convincing optical illusions, of a road movie for my cats and eventually concluded that the only way to navigate my fears would be through working with community to tend to the space around me to help it grow as best as I can. If you haven't seen the film yet, it's available right here on Art Angels YouTube a little bit longer than we hoped for. Um, we're going to keep it up for April since uh, we, we want you to have, be able to watch it more. But right now, why not just hop in and ride with me a little? As always, I'm the first guest to arrive, but it is our last chance to snag a proper interview with my co-stars, so let's see if we can find them. Okay, so we're looking for two cats today, as we always do. I brought my microphone. They've been quite intrigued today. shaoru has been uh, resting, nestled in my old pile of clothes, which I left on the floor, and on a light. And hang on a second, what do we have here? It's a little lady, and she's having a wash. Hello, Lola. Hi. Would you feel like doing an interview? Oh, and there's another one. I didn't see you there, Shaw. Hi, Shaw. Would you like to do an interview? Oh, just having a rest next to my pills. That's nice. Um, I would like to ask you some questions about uh, Abby Palmer invents the weather, starring Lola Lola and Shaw Kao. That's you two. Lola, would you ever consider collaborating with your sister again? Hmm. How do you feel about heat now you have access to this fine balcony space out here that is very well netted? Huh. And has your relationship with the climate crisis changed through this journey? Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can ask Jau a question. There she is, having a little nestle in my bra. That's nice. Shao, um, do you think your anxiety around climate has changed at all throughout the process of making these films? Um, and how do you feel now they're out? What are you going to do next? Have you got a plan for your next project? Hmm. Okay, well, since you've both been excellent stars, let's see if we can find you a little treat. Now over here, you will see two things. Some beautiful flowers from Art Angel. Thank you, Art Angel. Uh, I feel like a million dollars. They're beautiful. And next to it, some dentabites that have been quite chewed up by a cat. And as we talked about last week, um, I think it's really important to pay my co-stars. So let's see if they'll take a little something. Oh, yeah. Let's put this here. Oh, yeah. oh I see another little face. 
No, we both are. Okay. No, Levine. You have been such an excellent movie star. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you give me a high five? Can you give me a high five? No, you don't want to give me a high five. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much, my friend. That's for all your hard work. And shall we? You are also an excellent movie star and very good at flying in underwear. Shall we? Can you give me a high five? Can you give me a high five? Very good. Excellent. You're both fantastic. We're very proud to have you in this film. Okay, well, they're crap at doing interviews, but they're excellent at high fives. Let's go back to the studio. <laughs> Hello again, my friends. Uh, it's still me, Abby Palmer, and this is still your favorite talk show slash after party, The Weather. As always, my collaborators, I mean, we just, I'm not even gonna pretend I'm mad at them. They were brilliant cats throughout this process, weren't they? Um, but they're not great at being uh, interview hosts. Don't worry, we have a plan for that. Now, every week I do try to introduce my guest with a little story about how we met and I have been saving the best till last. Um, I met this week's artist down in the catacombs of Shoreditch Town Hall where they were performing a Ouija board in which a spirit took over my smartphone and I was suddenly haunted. I suddenly, I, I kind of feel like we have been uh, kind of collaboratively haunting each other ever since. Um, they're an artist, game maker, composer, producer, and all around doer of way too many things. Please welcome our special and final guest, Nick Murray. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How's it going? Oh, good. Thanks for having me. This is this is cool. Yeah, isn't it cool? Um, how's I've, the weather? <laughs> it's balmy down here. Where, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes it sound very dramatic. Uh, I'm just in the quietest space I could find. You're and in a basement hot. again, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah. In another basement. Yeah. Um, that, you, that's where you live, I assume. It, it seems like it, yeah, these days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we should probably start by sharing a visual description of ourselves for the audience. Is that all right mm -hmm. with you? Yeah. Um, Okay, I am a woman in my 30s, white woman, with a little gay double denim outfit and uh, a kind of like headdress situation. Behind me on the wall, there's like, oh, that wasn't very clear. It's like a headscarf um, that you would keep your hair back from driving. This isn't a very good description. And I've got sunglasses on my head. Behind me on the wall, there's some lots of pictures of plants and I'm lying on a beautiful velvet chaise long. It is pink. How about you, Nick? Uh, I am a mixed race person with blue hair on the top, black hair on the sides, wearing uh, wireframe glasses with big round lenses. Uh, I am sitting against a gray background, wearing a gray t-shirt. Perhaps this would have been a good outfit for fog. It looks very grey on grey. Um, <laughs> and uh, slight facial hair and earrings. Excellent. Thank you so much. And just a reminder for the audience, if you have questions for Nick or myself, you can ask them via the YouTube comments thread or on Twitter via the hashtag Abby Palmer Invents the Weather. We'll be answering questions at the end of the show. Ting! Um, okay. <laughs> so, um... Of course, recently you scored the soundtrack for a little film series called Abby Palmer Invents the Weather. Um, but I wondered if we could start by exploring a little bit of your practice outside of that for the audience, um, outside of cat films. How would you describe your work? <laughs> uh, 
outside of cat films yeah. what else is there that's it it's all downhill after cat yeah. films uh my practice films. is yeah. uh, primarily i'm a game designer uh making games for art spaces and uh using it for interactive poetry um I liked how you, you said we were kind of collaboratively haunting each other because I feel like that is my arts practice currently. <laughs> like, um, outside of that, I uh, work doing production for uh, kind of arts events, most uh, often based around games as well. Yeah, and now play this comic festival coming up. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm in this basement working on a uh, festival of, of experimental games at Somerset House at the moment called Now Play This. We open on Saturday. Uh, how's it feeling? Do you feel ready? Yeah, let's say yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, all, it's all coming together. Yeah. Yeah, everyone go. It will be great. I love Now Play This. It's a great festival. Oh, um, thanks. It's really good. I think something we both come back to a lot in our work is themes of kind of play and also creating new and weird worlds or like spaces mm. to think through. Um, and I guess a big part of this project for me has has well i well, i should probably explain for the for the couple of years prior to this project you, you and i had a project that we is kind of an ongoing uh intermittent more intermittent now project called nick and abby talk to each other which is a way of hanging out with your friends when you work in the arts yeah. <laughs> uh, we had to make it into a formal process but like a lot of the conversations that uh we we talked about that it was like a lot about navigating this sense of impending doom over the pandemic and for me it really made it into the films quite quite a lot this sense of how do we deal with these big crises how do you deal with the fact that you suddenly can't leave your house how do you deal with the fact that um the, the world is kind of on fire what do we what do we do about that um and yeah i guess i wondered how that whether that had an impact on how you were composing the score for the films. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think uh, those conversations. Like, I feel like I owe a lot to us being able to take that time. Like, the outside of the compositions, I feel like it really changed my like entire arts practice. Like, you're mm -hmm. talking about how how our, our work is very playful in these kind of playful worlds. I think through the chats we were having, it became almost like a, a kind of ethos of survival. Like. If you make these things playful, you can understand them in a different way, and like maybe we can get through this thing called like life. <laughs> um, yeah, for the for the films also, like I remember when we first were working on Heat, and it was a very different film. Like it was very, I think it was a lot more doomy. It was um, a lot. It was a it was a visual indication of like my emotional state of, like, of us at the time. Starting to navigate yeah. a climate apocalypse through <laughs> yeah. Films your cats <laughs> yeah um and like we had all sorts of other kind of inspirations like kind of spaghetti westerns because of the landscapes and all of these things like that and it was quite hard to bring some of those things in because we were having these like quite intense feelings about just the world in general mm -hmm. and the inspirations that we were, were drawing from were very fantastical like it all felt like you know like real matte painted sets that kind of stuff um, and what we ended up with feels a lot more pared back, but kind of hopeful. Like I think mm -hmm. over the last two years of our chats, we've taken a real roller coaster in ourselves <laughs> and like. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that this film especially, I think this one and Fog are very reflective of reflective of the times we were talking about some of these things and how we brought them in. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad that we we kind of ended with Heat the way we did. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was watching it again last night and like got a tiny bit teary just thinking oh we we did this and this was nice and it feels like we can kind of step forward and just keep doing doing this yeah yeah, yeah it was really great I'm really glad that we took the time to redo the film as well with Rosie yeah. uh, the film editor that uh, we we've both worked shout out to Rosie with. Rosie's amazing shout out to Rosie we love you and also assistant Kat 
Lola, we love you, Lola. Um, there's a whole bit that I haven't talked about in this project where Lola had a leg injury and we ended up, I ended up getting a taxi and climbing up like three flights of stairs every day to do the editing in oh Rose's no. house because, Lo because Lola the cat had to be in a cage, but it felt like such a cat friendly production that it felt really important to do. And then eventually my legs couldn't handle that after a couple of times. So then Rosie would bring her whole desk set up down to the like floor, the basement or like the ground floor of her flat and it felt really like we were all doing this thing to like bend for these cats like yeah. and it, I don't know if it was like this really intense connection um but yeah anyway sorry that's a side note of um cats no that's a main story that's more than a side note that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, it was. It was really. I think Rosie's relationship with cats in this film was really nice. Actually, it was really nice to to work with her. Um, but yeah, we we were all what you and me and Rosie like. I guess there were these moments where we were all the 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 first film was very bleak. The first version of Heat and um and we ha I had to stop. Uh, I had to keep stopping during like recording the voiceover because I would have to cry for a little bit. And actually having the chance to like tear it down and say this isn't what I want I don't want I don't want to make work that's just panicking like mm -hmm. I don't want to make what everyone I know knows everyone who I'm making work for knows that things are bad sometimes why would I add to that sensation yeah. what does that do except to keep you static you know like we, we know it's bad how do we survive and it really felt like so many of our conversations were about like tiny little corners of like the 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 growth in your community like it feels like that thing about mycelium connections like spreading out and like bringing a whole forest together like um yeah. like like putting up these roots and saying like no i want to connect to the world i love i don't want to pa mm. panicking about it isn't going to do good for anyone yeah, for sure um, and especially as the theme is introducing it to your cats like yeah. teaching another creature about a thing i think that it felt natural to start them in a kind of panicked way but actually you want to give these let's be honest like our surrogate children you want to give them the, the very best idea of like what the world could be so it kind of yeah. had to be more grounded in 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 the hope that we've kind of sort of found or like made over the last yeah couple of years yeah yeah um has that come into your other work at all like do, do you feel like i mean it feels like it's come everywhere right like yeah right <laughs> um yeah definitely i think around a similar time as we were talking about a couple of the middle film films i was making interactive kind of narrative pieces and they got really doomy like really kind of apocalyptic um but i think i kind of needed to do it at the time mm -hmm. like it was very very cathartic mm -hmm. i don't know if they're like good <laughs> like or that they're good for the moment they do exactly what i needed them to do but i think that's not the kind of work that i'm trying to make at the moment like it's all got a bit more hopeful i'm currently like working with an incredible instrument builder called tom fox to make uh like the complete like polar opposite of that and like utopian sounds like trying to create this uh yeah utopian interactive kind of sonic work as a real counter to all of those pieces that kind of can be left in the past now yeah yeah, yeah it was a re i think there's something about i mean first of all that's something incredible i'm really interested in. i want to hear all about those instruments <laughs> <laughs> are you making sounds with the instruments or are you making instruments both the last one was an interactive map as an instrument that you that that charts rivers and yeah. you have to waggle a little branch with some leaves over the top and as you waggle it over different mountain ranges different sounds are made um yes really fun stuff that i think it's, yeah it's just more so we can muck about with like a saw and like actually physically make some things like it's very kind of process driven which is nice yeah i think that's been a really big part of like what we've talked about as well is like keeping your hands busy actually yeah. is really like it was really nice to build a world for the cats and like actually physically be in there like mixing stuff up and using my hands um, because i guess another big thing that we've come back to quite a lot in all these conversations has been like the relationship with ha how we navigate the internet and virtual space and, yeah. and this kind of like dystopian other like the fact that like social media now feels like 
I think the internet has been so well colonized um, in a way that like it's impossible to escape from. If you're an artist, you sort of it feels sometimes like you can't step away from yeah. from, and um, and the rest of the internet, like outside of these these like th countries that are the internet, like 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 Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, you know, like outside of those countries, everything feels a lot jankier and harder to yeah. navigate. So you're yeah. sort of stuck in these these situations um, and in order to have a practice it, it sometimes feels that you need to be talking about your work and nobody remembers you exist if you're not in in one of those countries like yeah um, exactly. exactly um yeah so having the counterpoint to that being making sound and making i i feel like i don't think i could have made this kind of project that's a lot of brown in it like it's not mm. it's not always beautiful you know <laughs> like um i don't think i could have done that while being on Instagram in the same way, I took yeah. like a long, long break from it. Um, and I think the aesthetic, it, it traps you in this kind of weird, weird aesthetic place as well. Yeah. Does the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. And that aesthetic has like a particular speed to it as well, which I was so happy we managed to avoid on these films, both in, in your, your filming and creation of the, the pieces, but in the sound as well. Like nothing needs to be frantic or frenetic or like rushed or anything like it feels like each film really takes its time and kind of thinks through a conclusion and reaches it and doesn't uh try to force that at any point mm. which like really feels like antithetical to how a lot of kind of social media is working like you've got to get to the get to the thing show the thing and then do it again with something else so yes it's nice i don't yeah i don't think the, the films need to be well i mean i think Personally, I do think they are beautiful all the way through. Like, I think that you maybe were so close to them that you see the bits that aren't as beautiful. <laughs> and so, because I see them through through a screen, so I just think that they're amazing yeah, all the yeah. way through. Um, but uh, yeah, well done, well done, Abby. <laughs> well, I was thanks. Oh, <laughs> No, I mean, it's just the thing. I think I had to give myself permission to be like, I'm working with boxes. I'm working with like making yeah. something that doesn't have to be like, in, I guess it's like about being flawless, about yeah. the, the Instagrammable perfection. Um, let's talk about the Foley as well. Like, so we, oh. like a big part of, I really wanted you to work on this project because it, a big part of it for me has been like creating these, this sensory experience for my cats, but for the, for the films as well. Um, and it just felt like from the work we've done before, that's, yeah, it, like, how was it for you? Like, what was your favourite bit of Foley that you, you <laughs> <laughs> I uh, realised that, so, that, I mean, the first bit that, like, I always think about, which isn't technically Foley, like, it's, it's recorded, but just the amount of, like, like, hours of rain sound that I just went out and got, <laughs> just kind of sat there, just getting rain, I'm like, how can I make this rain different, like, put a sheet down, or... All of these little bits. So that comes up in every single film, I think. Well, how um, do you not mention that? Like, I don't know how I didn't know you. Because <laughs> whenever we talk about it, I show you like the weird things, like banging on a bowl full of water instead, <laughs> instead of me just sitting glumly thinking, "Is this enough rain?" Um, but yeah, actually, in this in this film, in particular, in in the heat, there's the bowl with the fish in, with the kind of flashing fish. Yeah, and the sound of the recording of it had kind of other things going on but the sound of the yeah. fish itself was amazing and so I remember spending quite a while trying to recreate that sound in particular um and so having like different sized bowls of water and like hitting them with like different styles of stick and all sorts of stuff try, trying to get that like exact sound um, yeah which is why I think I featured it quite heavily because I was quite <laughs> happy with it um yeah, oh, well, what was the thing I sent you, like, while we were doing the process, showing you the video of, like, the, a toy that came off a lollipop with a little fan on the top and just whirring yeah. that and using that as a sound. I think it comes in as a train sound in the first one of the films, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with the Foley on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really, I think it's like such a mesmerizing part of filmmaking that like you don't get to see enough. Like I listened mm. to a podcast, um, I think it was a 99% Invisible podcast while I was 
making these films where they were saying like all of the animal noises in it's obvious when you think about it because i've filmed animals um all of the animal noises in like nature documentaries are foley because yeah. you can't you can't put a lapel a lapel mic on a tiger like so yeah. and like <laughs> um the one that really blew my mind it's so it feels so obviously intuitive but like when elephants walk it's really quiet because they have padded feet and they land softly they're really yeah. dainty but like because yeah, they're not stomping around yeah they're not like <laughs> angrily yeah <laughs> keeping themselves up right right <laughs> like no animal could get like walk with such pain in their legs they're right. not drums their legs are drums yeah. and it really blew my mind to think like oh my god i didn't realize i i just assumed that that's the case and and it's so expected now it's like that's like when you eat yellow when you expect it to be lemon like or, yeah. or bread it tastes like strawberries and it, it would mess with your senses to have like a silent elephant moving through a film um and it really blew my mind and yeah it was a real big part of filming these that like we had to really work out ways to work with the cats to a film them they didn't they don't like when you poke a camera in their faces and b capture that like the noises of, of it like it, it became a really and because I, you can't my cats are so um rude like <laughs> <laughs> no they're like it's not even like my cats are, are products of the pandemic so they they don't they they've just got used to Mia and Faye, the, the stylists and the makeup artists mm. I've been working with I'm um, coming every week and today Mia got like a friendly nudge from Shao <gasps> and that felt real progress yeah, like we were, that's huge. we were all very moved <laughs> by that situation but then they don't um they don't perform like themselves they're introverts they don't like to perform when there are other people in the room so we couldn't have someone to help me with sound or anything like that and actually getting the sounds as well as filming as well as lighting and as well as like interacting and trying to listen to the cats it became really impossible so um yeah, it's really nice that you know about Foley. That was helpful. Yeah, <laughs> that was a very long-winded way of telling you that. <laughs> Gosh, just a, as a slight aside, I'm st really struggling because usually when we talk, cause like as you were saying, we do Nick and Abby chat. Yeah. I'm always taking notes and I have to remember yeah. we're on TV. Yeah. Stop writing also, things down. <laughs> I mean, it's also amazing to me. We've done this project where we can have we talk to each other for how, like three years, two or three yeah. years now. And yeah. no, like we've never shown anyone any of it. It's just yeah. not come up. Like, so it's been like, <laughs> I think that's also been a part of it. It's been very secret art. That's been yeah, happening. yeah, which is great. Which is brilliant. Yeah. Like, we haven't had to like, yeah, haven't had to commodify it yet. Yeah, um, not yet. No, other, other things did <laughs> come have come out of it though. Like, yeah, um, like you were mentioning before we before we came on things like the mentorship and us collaborating on just little ideas that we've done separately but kind of asy mm. and asynchronously mm. um i still want to work on the, the slug opera <laughs> like, yeah that sounds really like good. a weird yeah, thing to say to all the audience putting that out there we should explain what that is so someone commissions us yeah I right <laughs> Um, I'm making in my studio at the moment loads of clay slugs and um, I'm really like focusing on their like how they breed and the fact that they can kind of hang from mucus threads and um, intertwine and have this like really slimy queer sex which I'm like I got really obsessed with slugs during talked about them last week yeah, yeah I was about to say you did, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm also really obsessed with like this magnetic slime that you can make um, with like it's it's this slime that kind of it's got iron filings in it and it, it kind of undulates and talks to to each other and to, to magnets um, in a way and with the, the studio I'm in at the moment but this could also go anywhere else if you're thinking of commissioning it um, <laughs> we, we um, just picture this slugs fucking lots of <laughs> 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 and then Nick has composed a beautiful opera. He ha they haven't yet composed the opera. The opera will be composed. Ending. And a, a romantic opera for slugs. Again, I would bring in the the operatic soundtrack that Ennio Morricone wrote for Once Upon a Time in the West to kind of like as a as a reference point. Lots of like oh no noises i'm picturing um imagine that it would be as as a, a, a so a, a, a love opera for slugs it sounds you, amazing you want to see that world don't you it writes itself <laughs> <laughs>
um, I think it's important to like move beyond, move beyond this one project. <laughs> <laughs> move into a different animal kingdom, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but speaking of animal kingdoms, I mean, um, the real important thing that we need to talk about today is, of course, Barty, your beloved cat. Bartholomew. In <laughs> 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 Right, keep it together, be professional on TV. <laughs> yeah, Bartholomew has made my cat. <laughs> um, it's a shame, like I'm not in the space where he is today, so I can't yeah. kind of bring him on for a for a cameo. But uh, I do have visual aids. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, got a photo book of Barty. Will you flip us through? Will you flip us through? Oh, he's such yes. a handsome boy. Oh, it's too handsome. Uh, some fades. Um, there he is under the table. <laughs> um, in a bag. Uh huh. Body. <laughs> Having a snooze. <laughs> I'm looking through this and remembering just how shonky this photo book is. It's really, it really wasn't for anyone else. 80 foot number one. Oh, he's got such a dainty foot. Such a dainty foot. I really want dainty to Dainty foot them. number two. Oh, look at those paws. <laughs> oh, dainty foot number three. Oh my goodness, he's so dainty. Resting on my hand. Oh, Barty! <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably you enough of that. Bartholomew. Um, it's just so, I just think, I wonder how many people are, can he give high fives? Thank you, Art Angel, that's a good question. That's a can great I? question. I mean, not on command, but he's been known to, to, <laughs> to reach out. <laughs> I do think it's really important to know that, like, anyone can make art about their cats that's the real take home of this you've made a photo book of Barty <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. spent a year making weather for my cats I think yeah. cats are like they obviously they've been muses since the ancient Egyptians possibly before how can we possibly tell um, I don't know about history probably there are ways <laughs> I thought the the world was uh, three million years old until JR talked to me on the like if you haven't seen episode one of this of the weather this talk show JR Carpenter came on and showed me a fossil that was how old 36 million years old something massively old yeah. and my little Catholic school mind was blown because I really <laughs> I thought I was being like pretty uh, open-minded to not think that life started when Jesus was born. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I thought it was three million years old. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't know yeah. time. Um, every day's a school day. <laughs> yeah, every day's a school day. I really have learned from this. But yeah, you can make art about your cats, and um, would you like you have other art of of Barty in your life, don't you? Would you like to talk I about the other? I would. <laughs> So, um, Barty enjoys my food, specifically uh, chicken nuggets, <laughs> to the point where if ever we get McDonald's, he has to have his own Happy Meal so he can have some chicken nuggets. <laughs> and my wonderful partner commissioned a portrait of Barty by uh, an amazing artist called Holly Gorn. Uh, I wonder if you can see this. So, I think I I can see it and it's magnificent. The dainty foot, <laughs> chicken nuggets, he's in a bag. This hangs pride of place in my room so I can see it every day. Um, and is maybe the best piece of art I own. I'm sorry, Abby, I know I own some of your art, but maybe anything with Bartholomew Aaron know. is... Uh, I think it might be some of the best art, like, genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. Categorically, yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's got everything. It's got drama, it's got dreamies, it's yeah. got a yeah. happy meal, it keeps it real, it's got yeah. a dainty foot, there's some elegance in that, it's got love. I yeah. don't know, what more could you want? It's, no. Yeah, it's... 
it's, I it's the real uh, Gazamkunst work of, of like the pet world. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Um, it's been actually that's also been something that I wanted to talk about was like we both have had times in this where like we like I I think I got really worried right towards the end of the project like just before I was about to go live this anxiety that like I've made this work about my cats and it felt like such a I suddenly was like, shit, am I Zoe Deschanel without a ukulele? Like, if you're Zoe Deschanel, wow. that's cats. Like, I was really worried about it feeling like twee, almost mm. like this this idea. But like, um, and I think that was something that at some point you were worried about that sound, sound wise yeah, as well, weren't yeah. you? Like the idea of it coming across as twee and like having, and I guess the thing of like having feelings about your cats and then being big feelings. Mm. Um, right. Being, yeah, yeah, being something that like, that, like the idea that it's not a, a worthwhile subject. And yet there's so much work about, um, about other forms of love on there like rom yeah. so much work is romantic love or like love for a f f familial love but like mm. um i'm just really fascinated in that like i don't really have a point it's just interesting to think yeah. about it like uh, how much power that takes from you because we're like dealing with but i feel like we're dealing with really big heaven and earth topics here but just right. at, on a small scale yeah, <laughs> on, on, a, on a human scale which is you know where things can count as well like, yeah i think I still go back and forth on the twee thing from the kind of sound point of view but like the way the place where I sit at the moment is that actually yeah some of it really is twee and actually that's okay because yeah, yeah. I feel like it's still conveying universal themes like you say like we love our pets and they're like important parts of our lives and the spaces yeah, yeah. we inhabit and like Bartholomew is a bit twee <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that's fine like and yeah, I, I don't think that has to be a bad thing. Yeah, um, that's true, too. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's true, like, a lot of my cultural references that I sent you, like, mood board, it, mood boarding stuff was, like, sesame. I mean, all of right. my references yeah. were glass doing sesame street. Talk about sesame street, yeah. of the references. A lot of, um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of the inspirations were puppet-based. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's perfect, yeah. Yeah, I think it's. I think there's something. I don't. I don't know. For me, I also the place I was in when we started this project, like it was like we we're coming sort of out of like people perceiving the pandemic as a pandemic, mm. and it felt like such a crisis. And I felt like no, I don't want to go into that world. I want something small and cozy and comfortable. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm immunosuppressed. Like um, being being in the p pandemic has been terrifying and and dangerous and and having to come back out into the world I, I wasn't ready yet I wanted no. and creating a, a world I guess it comes back to the, so like a big thing that we talk about with like with play and creating worlds is creating worlds where we feel safe as well like and and where the like I think that's something that I've seen in a lot of your games like as well this idea I and mean, one of my favorite of your games is Tamagotchi Seance which um <laughs> has such a big it's a game that is a seance for your tamagotchi and it's like this really it's disturbingly emotional for a game about holding a seance for your tamagotchi <laughs> i would say um but it feels like a way of like processing like there's something about how we process time and how we process memory with both of the tamagotchi generation first time yeah. around um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just in case my little sister's watching and it's like <laughs> <laughs> A Tamagotchi is a digital pet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, how, like, I, I don't know, I keep, I'm just talking and talking, but like that, how do you feel about that? Like, does Tamagotchi sounds feel like that same kind of thing? Please. Yeah, I mean, I get that it's, it's weird having this conversation, or maybe, maybe it's not weird, and maybe this is the kind of a, a chapter point in all the conversations we've been having, because uh, the work that I've been, I've done, since Tamagotchi Seance in that same theme is directly related to us talking about like mortality and yeah, the climate yeah. crisis and all of this. So I'm still working on that kind of series and it's turned into a talk now about mm -hmm. Tamagotchis and death because I think that, and like maybe this, maybe this relates to the whole kind of things being able to be small and being a bit twee, but I think that uh, on one hand, the Tamagotchi is a perfect game system because literally all you need to know going in is a general concept of what death is. Mm. And then on the other hand, it's a game 
or a toy specifically for like you know kids real like it's not it, it, it was marketed at you know six seven years old up but deals with a really really significant topic um, and doesn't oh oh what was echoing that cat um, keep finish the thought we don't yeah, have to keep um, hear that cat and keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah just the uh the there there is a quite a quite a significant topic that's being introduced to kids in a way that's not kind of shied away from or not mm. made uh kind of saccharine in any way but you know is this thing in your hand that you kind of have to deal with every day like maybe i'm overblowing what a tamagotchi is but I, maybe i look at tamagotchis too much and they become no, too I serious think, in I my work right. so, i think yeah, you're right like, like, I, I, I don't yeah. know there's there's like the idea there's a really nice episode of Bob's Burgers actually where like Jean the kid and Bob's Burgers like is trying to keep a like a, a newfangled Tamagotchi toy alive and like um it it's like strangely moving because he's I remember like giving my Tamagotchi to a, like a family member to keep alive while I was at school because we weren't allowed them in school anymore because everyone was trying to keep their Tamagotchi alive instead of doing maths. Um, and <laughs> and just that thing of like, um, like actually you greet, the first time your Tamagotchi grieves, you, you the dies, you grieve, you feel really sad and it doesn't get, you, you, you get more used to it, but it doesn't necessarily get easier. You don't, you, every time you think maybe this time will be the one that I keep alive for, forever, yeah. like, and you can't. And I think yeah. that's a really good lesson for it. Yeah. And it's also again, like a universal thing. Oh, yeah, I think that yeah. meow might mean it's time for our first segment. Um, are you ready for our first segment? I'm ready. Let's, Let's go. go. Show, 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 show your pets the weather. Show, 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 show your pets the weather.
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, that little segment was showing your pets the weather, the part of the show where you, the public, get to join in the fun of showing your beloved pets the weather. I can't believe it's the last one. Thank you so much, everyone, who every week uh, fills my life with beautiful pet videos. I am gutted that you won't. I won't have to look at them every week now. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was your favourite pet? Oh, so I have I have a couple for two for different reasons. Jiggy the cat was incredible. Jiggy the cat uh, is because awesome. just what a perfect angel. Yeah. Um, but then Stacy's mum the chicken because <laughs> I desperately want chickens. Like I would love to just have chickens just everywhere. Yeah. Um, and that was that was just wonderful to see. Yeah, it's really I like my partner Golo has been uh, worrying recently about the um, pen, like the fact that there's been a shortage of vegetables, and he's been saying, well, like when the next stage of the apocalypse will be when we get chickens on our balcony, <laughs> um, which obviously we have cats and they now have access to the balcony, so it's never gonna work. I don't. We have a very hot balcony; they would die. But like, oh God. it would be nice. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, are you ready for segment number two? Yeah, let's go. Back in. <laughs> I like my pets, you like your pets. Let's like our pets together. And now it's time to show my pets your pets being shown the weather. <laughs> Um, I have to say that was false advertising this week. Lola watched those chickens for a while before she walked off. She was quite into the chickens. <laughs> She was actually, but she was more interested in getting a snack. That was the complicated dilemma she was having. It was like, I would like to see what's on the screen, but I'm also hungry for a snack. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. I, yeah. I can empathise with that a lot. A complicated uh, situation. Oh, Sam Caro, can we have an art gaming collaboration between the two of you? He left me with a sadness that it's over. Maybe an exploratory game would be wonderful. Oh, yes, uh, yes Sam, that's... you can. <laughs> yes. And this is something we talk about a lot. A lot. <laughs> like, the fact that it hasn't happened already is, yeah, weird. It's literally a lack of, uh, we, we did actually, I believe, apply for some things during the horrible period of the pandemic where everyone was applying for the same things and we didn't get commissioned. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to get paid sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why that hasn't happened. Yes. But um, yes, it's definitely something we're thinking about. I wonder if maybe the Slug Opera is interactive. Who knows? Oh my God! Imagine if it was interactive. Just that it would be, be cool. actually so good. I would really That'd be like amazing. That. Yeah, yeah. I definitely it's, think. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no! I was just going to say maybe this is scope creep. We haven't even started it yet, and it's already now interactive. Classic. Daniel, oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Nick, what was the process of composing the sound for each film? Thank you, Daniel, for that great, great question. question. Thanks, Daniel. Um, each one was slightly different, and I think that they all started with a lot of conversations between us. Mm -hmm. um, you had some like amazing uh, kind of inspirations for each one, which is sent yeah. over, yeah. and they were all like they weren't weren't necessarily sounds that we wanted to use. They were like feelings or things that you'd seen that what you were trying to conjure in the film. And then from a real kind of practical point of view, I would, I think for each one, I would start by kind of noodling out some sounds on an instrument first. Because um, actually this is, I remember us having this conversation a couple of times with the films that they all started very kind of music based and then we kind of pared them all down to be more the sounds that were happening or the sounds of that weather. Um, so yeah, it was it was very much trying to trying to find the the feeling first, and then matching that with the sounds that we were kind of mixing in from the film and kind of foley of that that space mm. and, and things like that. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, does anything kind of stick out for you in, in the process when we were talking about sound? I think there was something in like, especially in Fog, which is like a film that felt complicated to make and write because it's a really complex emotional landscape. I'm talking about like survival and pain and um, you came back to fog horns and it yeah. felt it felt like in a way it t turned out to be the perfect image because that's exactly what they're for. It's for like sight signaling through the darkness. Trying to and, communicate, and, yeah. Yeah, and trying to communicate something. And it ended up like it, well, the first time I heard it, it broke me. Like it was, it was really, it was very emotional like to hear it. And, and um, it brought a range to, I think each of the, the soundtracks have elevated the, the films in a way, like it's, it's given me space to like come back to them from a different point of view and, um, and feel feel things that like and and br and brought out emotions that I wasn't aware that were there as well. I think as the same that happens in rain, where the the rain cloud is lifted, and the, I was initially like, I think we had some few discussions where I was like, I'm not sure, I'm not, I don't, I it it felt like there were so many emotions that I wasn't expecting to feel that it, I couldn't, it didn't, it almost felt like it didn't fit because I was like but this is what it it's, I want it to be silly but actually it brought out this like real tragedy and beauty to it and that's and I and when I watched it back again I was like oh sh shit yeah I think that's the, the, the joy of collaborating yeah like seeing your work in partnership in tandem with someone else's mm -hmm means you can really see it as something else like I was like in that same conversation about like betweenness of things like mm. this like a lot of that was was kind of metered by the film like I think that yeah. I, I don't know how many of the, the pieces of sound could stand on their own like they were made to be part of this but yeah. um, being able to see them in the film I like and co especially coming back to them recently like I was watching through all of them again and um it's it feels yeah in that same way of like kind of tugging on into on new emotions it feels so kind of enriching seeing these or hearing these sounds against like this amazing kind of visual landscape you've created so yeah 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 it's really yeah. interesting isn't it um i don't know it, it it yeah it's it i think it's i think collaborating means you have to relinquish some control doesn't it yeah. like yeah. i think that's really good I, it's so much of our this this project is called abby palmer invents the weather it's so self-centered self in a way and what we've talked about over the last few years and like reject like trying to move away from instagram although anyone who's been on instagram this month sorry i'm there again but like <laughs> um, but uh, th there's this capitalism rewards one artist but like the thing that we've been talking about over and over and over again is literally just um we only can do this as a community like that's it yeah, like we, that network we, that mycelial network yeah, again yeah mycelial network yeah we 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 that's all we are we're only the sum of 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 the people we're working with and i think yeah. that's the mistake every time that you can pull that that art marketing makes you want to fall into as well and, mm. and money makes you want to fall into but actually yeah I don't know if you get something different from it I, I came into art for community and that's still the thing I love the most about yeah. it um so if he's got a question do you think collaborating with pets has taught you things you will take into other collaborations with humans that is a great question <laughs> yes actually <laughs> um something that was really interesting about working with uh Shau and lola was uh learning to listen without speaking which if you've watched any of these episodes i'm not very good at not speaking <laughs> it's not a skill i have um but um communicating with non-human entities and having to learn to like watch for their signals and and read them and the same like it's not just with the cats it's like communicating with like the nature i'm bringing into the house as well we're talking we keep talking about my serial networks and that's been a big part of my process has been like going out fingering mushrooms you know like <laughs> um like th th that's silly that was a silly thing to say going out and touching mushrooms and connecting with with nature and bringing that home again for for the cats that's that's been something sort of it's the question of like finding ways to say what is it you need and a, the the project feels like complicated because 
I know I'm not give, I know it's for me, you know, but like actually even to make a film series that the it's a kind of farce that I'm trying to create the weather for my cats when they don't understand what I'm doing. Even though it's a farce, you still have to listen to them in a different way and watch and give space and you and not rush them. Like, you know, I couldn't rush them if they weren't up for collaborating that day, it wasn't worth pushing it. You sort of have to give yourself the day off and say like, okay, we'll do something else. And and they, you, it doesn't work unless they trust you to do that. So I've, I've learned to be a little bit kinder both to myself and to the people I'm working with. Um, Jay, communicating with trees is fun and different. Thank you, Jay. Jay, it is. <laughs> that's true I, I think that's that's a perfect statement just right there i want that on a t-shirt oh i think that means uh we're coming towards the end of the show i'm um, oh, nick no. before we go where can we find more out about your work uh you can find my work i'm online at nickmurray.horse uh, <laughs> <laughs> the second excellent url yes that is that my website is at nickmurray.horse um i'm on i'm not really on the socials either at the moment like less and less i think mm. yeah the website's the best but also um the project i'm working on at the moment is at nowplaythis.net um so you can see and actually like it kind of links to this as well that the theme for the AA festival this year is love mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of games exploring what love is and what care systems are um, so if that's something interesting, uh, have a look there too. There's one about someone loving a cat, is there not? Yes, there is a game called Point of Mew, uh, wherein a cat has to bring, well not has to, but decides and chooses to bring gifts to their sad owner, to their sad human counterpart. And um, it's just wonderful. It kind of unveil, like unravels into this like story about why they're there and all these things that are happening. Um, I don't want to spoil it in case anyone comes and plays. Or I think I think you can kind of find it online as well if if you're not local. But um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's great. And that last comment from Sam. I'm not going to read it out, but thank you, Sam. We appreciate that. It's really lovely to hear feedback as well. Um, so as we wrap up, I want to say a few things. Um, yeah, Sas groups a lot. I wish the weather could last forever too. I so, so do I. <laughs> uh, just a reminder: if you want to catch up on my film series, Abby Palmer invents the weather. All episodes are out now on our Angels YouTube channel. Um, they're all going to be there till the end of March, which is tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we're going to try and keep them up a little bit longer. Most of the films will be available um, until at least the end of April so keep on tuning in and soon enough hopefully I'm hope they're gonna try and be online forever because I would like that um there are still so many people I would love to interview and so many banging outfits to wear if you happen to be a tv producer with a massive budget and you have to this, <laughs> give me a call likewise if you're like an art maker and you're like oh I really would love a slug opera I'm available, <laughs> and so is Nick. <laughs> um, so for the very last time, I would like to say some thank yous. A huge thank you to Tank TV and the World Weather Network for hosting and supporting this project. I'm really grateful. A huge thank you to Art Angel for commissioning this project. Let's get those claps going, baby. Um, and just so many and tremendous thank yous uh, to Marina Doritas and Michael Morris for incredible production skills. Marina, it has been such a joy to work with you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to Lily Max Hager for incredible tech support and the making of Pet Show Reels. I want a big clap for that. There, it was Lily excelled herself this week. Um, a big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, claps all, claps across the board. I, I really feel like you went out there with the sound effects this week. I, that's my positive feedback. Thank you, <laughs> Mia Maxwell, for styling my iridescent uh, face. Oh uh, no, my clothes. What am I talking about? My uh, absolute... Salman Louise go to a gay bar recording this. Um, and thank you to Faye Carla for making up my beautiful face. And we had a great chat today. We really enjoyed it. Um, 
as ever, absolutely no need to thank the rudest cats in the world. That is a lie. They were wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Lola. Yeah. And as always, a massive thank you to you, the audience, for tuning in. Claps, 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 claps. Um, and then I want to say a big thank you to Nick, firstly, for the intro and outro music for Abby Palmer and Vesta Weather, which are also being used in this show. A little credit that also. And just a massive thank you for being such a special guest, Nick Murray. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> and for all the compositions. Oh my God, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so many, uh, so many thank yous. I'm your host, Abby Palmer, and Yay! for the very last time, this is beautiful weather. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>